Do you have a dog with a specific problem? Maybe it's cancer, arthritis. Do you just like hanging out with other people who have labs or golden retrievers or golden doodles? In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the power and the perils of Facebook groups. So stay tuned. Hi there. Welcome to Dog Happy. I'm Missy. In today's episode, I'll be discussing Facebook groups and the power of them uh, and pitfalls that you can run into when you belong to a group. If you're not familiar with Facebook groups already, almost any interest you can think of is available as a group on Facebook. Somebody has organized people into a group where people, other people, like-minded people can join, and then you can ask questions, you can share information, So these groups are really powerful, especially when you have a dog that has a particular illness. So I belong to a couple groups. I belong to some nutrition-based groups. I also belong to Keto Pet Sanctuary's group. Within the Keto Pet Sanctuary group, the organizing factor or the commonality between all of us is that we're feeding a ketogenic diet to our dogs. So you do need to be a member of Facebook to access their groups. Now on my feed, I have my, on the left-hand side under the search Facebook bar, I have my name, I have the friends icon, the groups icon, marketplace icon, watch icon events, and then see more. And then my shortcuts are listed underneath there. Now, if you are not a member of a group, I'm not sure if you would have the groups icon there. I believe you would, but um, if you don't, You can always just click on the search Facebook and say you were looking for dock diving. It would bring up everything for dock diving. It would bring up videos of dock diving. It would bring up groups. It would bring up posts that were made public on that subject. So you get a lot of material that may not be entirely relevant when you use the search Facebook function. So I'm going to go ahead and click on groups and head on in there. And then there is a search function for the groups. Now I'm going to type in dock diving because why not look into something that's a little bit fun. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up all the groups related to dock diving. Now it usually gives you about five groups that you can start with right away, but you can also click see all, and then you can scroll through the groups and see which One would be something that was either maybe in your area so you could join a club or something that interests you. One of the really great things, and I'll probably say that more than once during this episode, is that you don't have to be local to join these groups. So say you live somewhere where you, you don't, maybe your veterinary community isn't as robust as say where I live because it's more of a metropolitan area. You can still benefit from the knowledge base that's here and you may even be able to connect your vet in your area with one here if you find something that would benefit your dog, but maybe that's not currently offered in your area. So it just kind of opens up some different opportunities. So on Facebook, there are two different types of groups that you can be a part of. You can be a part of a public group or you can be a part of a private group. I do think that there are some additional types of groups available, but I'm not familiar with them and they're really not relevant to this particular podcast. So I'm going to choose Dockside Dogs because they are a public forum. And what that means is that when you're looking at this group on Facebook, you don't actually have to be a member to view their posts. So it when you're when you choose that group, the posts show just like your posts would show in your normal feed. And you can scroll down and you can view all of the information. Now, when you do click join the group, it does have some challenge questions that come up. Well, they're not challenge questions. I mean, it's not a challenge to answer. Do you have a dog? But um, They do have some questions that they ask that you answer before they approve you being in this group. So now you've seen this group looks really amazing. Lots of great information, looks super fun, looks very engaging. And you want to see how much activity there is. You would just click on about, and then you can see what this group is about, 
You can see the history of it. Um, and then you can scroll down to activity. You can see that they have four new posts a day, 68 in the last month. So it just gives you some basic information before you go ahead and join. Now we're, we're gonna leave Dockside Dogs and we're gonna go back to the search groups and we're gonna put in Dog Happy with an I. Oh my goodness, Dog Happy has a group page. Now the difference between the Dog Happy page and the Dock Diving page is that this group is private, which means that if you are not a member, you will not be able to see any of the posts within the group. And then when you join, you have to answer some questions and then you get approved into the group. My group currently only has three members because I created it for this particular podcast. So if you would love to join, I would love to have you. What you'll see in here are the posts for the podcast links and the YouTube channel links. I may even start putting some uh, clips that don't make it into the final edits in here. So um, I'm not sure what it'll evolve into, but you won't get spammed. So I'd love to have you please join. What you'll see is that this is private. Only members can see who's in the group and what they post. So if you do have questions, it, nobody else outside of the group will be able to see that. So if you have a dog, let's go back to Kita Pet Sanctuary. So if you saw my episode on got cancer, and if you didn't, it'll be linked below and it'll also be in the cards above me. Keto Pet Sanctuary has their own list where you can ask questions about the ketogenic diet. So within that group, the only common factor is that you have a dog on a ketogenic diet. Most of the dogs in there have come, their pet parents have come because their dog does have cancer. But for myself, I feed a ketogenic diet for different reasons. I'm trying to reduce inflammation to clarify symptoms, yada, yada. Anyway, but that's, you don't have to have the disease process. You just have to have an interest in the subject in order to be part of the group. So let's take the ketogenic group as an example. If you're feeding a ketogenic diet, your dog can have inflammation, they could have behavioral issues, they can have cancer, and they can have any type of cancer, really, they could have epilepsy. So that group is going to have questions related to all of those things and the diet itself. Now, if you had a dog that just had epilepsy, you might want to be part of the ketogenic diet group. So you can hear more about that. And you can ask people questions who have already done the diet. Or you may want to search on Facebook and find a group that's specific to canine epilepsy, which I know they have because years ago I belonged to it because I had a dog with epilepsy. The power of these groups is that you have a, a large population of people who are living what you're living. So while Ask Your Vet is always going to be your first option, by the same token, asking your veterinarian who feeds dog food, how to work a raw diet, it's probably not the right path to follow. Because while they can give you theory, they can't give you day to day in the trenches, in the bowl, feeding instructions. But if you joined a raw diet group, they could. In the business world, and maybe some of you already know him, Tony Robbins, he is a big proponent of success leaves clues. Find somebody who's been where you want to go and then follow in their footsteps. That is the other gift of these groups and joining a group is that you get the benefit of all of their successes and failures before you. Like we had a dog. Um, well, we have a dog, Digger. He is a silver lab. He was featured in the Digger Goes to the Chiropractor video. And I'll go ahead and again, link it somewhere up there and link it below too. And he got something called ITP, which is where he has low platelets. And thankfully he has no hair. So we had seen the bruising on his skin well before anybody would have, with a dog with a normal coat would have ever seen that. So on lab groups, which we belong to, we will share the information that, look, this is the second time this has happened after using a sulfa drug in a lab. Both of them had some kind of adverse reaction later in the process. So I would share that information on a lab group 
so that other lab owners would know. Your vet may not be there yet, but you're the caretaker of your dog, or you just kind of need to have that knowledge in the back of your mind. Given this information, I've heard that labs can have issues with sulfa drugs. Is there anything else I could use for my dog that would be as effective, but maybe not have as many potential side effects? Both of these have happened right near the end of the 14 day course of the medication. So I would be watching for those kind of things because both issues we've had, one was life-threatening and ended up um, actually contributing to that lab passing away. And the second one, we got lucky. But here's another reason why these groups are amazing is while I'm talking about my lab having low platelets, the treatment for low platelets is a high dose of prednisone. Your vet will say your dog will drink more water, maybe hungrier, have to go to the bathroom more. You have no idea what having to go to the bathroom more means until your dog is on that much prednisone. And what that meant was that Digger could not hold his urine for very long. There was so much. Now, he also is a large volume urinator, so already, so maybe it gets a little different depending on the dog that you have. However, when you're on a group and somebody says, oh my gosh, my dog's on high dose of prednisone, a lot of people, hopefully, who have been in your similar situation would write back and be like, look, you're going to need to come home during lunch. He's not going to be able to hold it. You may want to consider putting him in a doggy daycare, taking him to the vet, some place where he can have some additional monitoring or put him in a space where if he put some pee pads down, if he has to go to the bathroom, at least you're able to clean it um, in an easier manner. So that's another reason a group is a great place to be. You can ask people who are very specific to whatever the issue is that you're looking at. So again, Let's just go back for a second to Keto Pet Sanctuary. People on there have dogs with cancer, epilepsy, all of that. Well, you can join a group that is just for lymphoma, just for hemangiosarcoma, just for epilepsy. And those people will have even more specific knowledge. And even if their dog is passed, a lot of those people will stay on the list because they know the power of sharing information, anything you can do to help you jump forward in caring for your pet is incredibly beneficial. One of the other things that I wanted to mention, and I think I mentioned it a couple minutes ago, is when you do ask a question, how many answers you can actually get? And then what do you do with all that information? Think about these things almost like a Google search. You put your question in, you're going to get a bunch of answers back go through them, find the ones that you feel are the most relevant, maybe do another internet search. It's really sometimes very difficult to pick through the right answers. And that just comes with experience. You just have to ask the questions, you know, implement something, ask some clarifying questions. If it doesn't work out and it's not life threatening, you know, changing from beef to chicken. Oh, it's most of the time that's not going to harm your dog in any way. Mixing a medication and an herb, you know, sometimes you're going to need to look a little bit further. Just like you have to vet your sources on the internet, you'd have to do the same thing in a group. However, when you join one of those groups, you have access to the archives. You can type in a search bar for a question and you can read answers. Like you almost never even need to post in these groups that have been established for a while because so much information is already there. You can get kicked out of a group. You can get blocked. If you're not following the rules, your post may get held. You may be contacted and say, this isn't exactly what we're talking about in here. We don't believe in this. I've been on lists where I know, I know something works, yet the people that are on the list don't believe or don't know what I do, and they don't want you to share it either. And that's a really hard place to be. So sometimes you will find yourself on a list that on paper sounded really good. And then you find out that either you have to decide that you're going to just consume the information that they're providing and not participate because each time you participate, you're getting censored 
or you need to decide that this isn't the right list for you and be willing to change groups and leave a group if it's not the right fit. So just to remind you of the quote from Tony Robbins, success leaves clues. And that involves healthcare too. And if your pet has a problem, Facebook group is an excellent place and resource to go because you've got actual people who are in your actual situation and they're implementing ideas that you may be on the fence about and that maybe your vet doesn't know about. Because while vets are incredible wealths of knowledge, and are excellent at taking care of our pets. Sometimes, unless they have taken an interest in a particular area, they don't know about how to use these other tools. It's one more place and one more tool for you to get information to help your dog have a happier, healthier life. And that's what we want. Anyway, I can go on and on and on. Trying to do this one, not scripted. (laughs) So I know it was a little rambly, but I do appreciate you sticking with me. So just remember that all of the episodes that I mentioned during this show are linked below and probably in my YouTube video showed at the top. I really appreciate you guys being here today. If you have any groups that you are a part of that you love, 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 please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you have liked this video, I would love a like, five stars, leave a comment. I just would love to hear back from you all. Thank you so much for being here. Stay happy. 